Alright everybody, welcome back to the channel, Tech Guy Charlie here. So the Android 12 update or better known as One UI 4 in Samsung Universe is now out for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And I thought, let me show you everything new that the update brings to this phone. And as always, the wallpaper links are in the video's description along with the timecode. So without wasting any time, let's start the video. Alright, so one of the key features of Android 12 is the brand new theme engine. If I drop down the notification panel, you'll notice that the colors kind of match with our wallpaper. So we've got green icons that match with the grass and leaves and pink brightness slider that matches with the flower. And same goes for the calculator, you'll see that the colors kind of match with our wallpaper. And this is also compatible with some of the widgets on our phone such as the Gmail widget. So if we pinch in and tap on wallpaper and style, you'll see a new menu which says color palette. So what happens is that the phone picks out the colors that are in the wallpaper and allows you to use them as the theme. It will generate different color palettes so you can pick whichever one you want. Now you will also see this menu whenever you set a new picture as your wallpaper. So let's set this one as our wallpaper. There's a lot of yellow in it. So let's see what the phone thinks of this one. So as you can see, we are getting shades of yellow in the color palette. Now there's also an option over here, apply palette to app icons. If you enable this, you'll notice that the Samsung app icons will also change their color that will match the wallpaper. Unfortunately, it only changes the colors of the Samsung app icons. All of the third party app icons still have their original colors. So yes, this feature does have its limitations, but nonetheless, it is still an awesome feature. And a lot of you guys messaged me about this wallpaper. You know what? I will put the link to this wallpaper in the video's description. This does actually look really nice, especially when you have a theme that goes along with it. Now, to demonstrate this feature, I had to turn the lights off. So here's the thing. Even though the phone is at its lowest brightness, the screen is still fairly bright. And if you are using your phone at night when it is completely dark in your room, even this minimum brightness kind of hurts the eyes. So to solve this problem, Android 12 brings a new feature. So drop down the notification panel and look for extra dim and turn this feature on. And you will notice that the screen dims even further. It's even dimmer than the minimum brightness that you can set manually using the slider. And for a quick comparison, here's my Note 10 Plus also at its minimum brightness, but you can really see the difference extra dim makes. Now, if you don't have extra dim in quick panel, what you will have to do is tap on the plus button and drag and drop extra dim from the available buttons. And there you go. Now you have extra dim in the quick panel. If you long press, that will take you to more settings and you can increase or decrease the intensity. Higher the intensity, the dimmer the screen is going to be. Do you guys ever get paranoid and wonder if an application on your smartphone is secretly spying on you by turning on the phone's camera or the microphone? Do you? Because I do. Well, on Android 12, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So what happens is, whenever you open an application that uses the phone's camera or the microphone, for example, Snapchat uses both, the phone will throw up a little indication over here telling us that, hey, the camera or the microphone is in use. And if I quit Snapchat, that indication will turn off. So now the camera is not in use. You will also see the same indication whenever you use an application that uses the phone's microphone. For example, if you send an audio note through WhatsApp, you will see the exact same indication. So now that the microphone is in use, the phone is throwing up an indication and letting us know that, hey, the microphone is in use. In one of my tips and tricks video, I showed you that you can record a video by long pressing the camera shutter button in the photo mode itself. But here's the thing, you have to keep your finger on the screen. As soon as you let go of the finger, the video recording stops. And also you cannot switch the camera. So once the video recording is going on, you won't be able to use the ultra wide angle camera or the front camera. So that's one limitation of this mode. Now, One UI version 4 further improves on this feature and now if you press and hold the camera shutter button in the photo mode, now you can drag your finger to the lock icon and release. And this gives you a couple of controls on the screen. First off, now you can use the ultra wide or the telephoto lens when you record videos like this. Previously, you could not. Also, now you can switch between the front-facing 
or the rear camera. So that's also a new feature. Plus you can also turn the flash on or off. Then you can also take still photos. And obviously you also get to pause the video. Unfortunately, the 1080p limit is still there. So if you want to record in 4K, you will have to use the dedicated video mode. But still, I'm very happy to see that Samsung has improved the video recording feature in the photo mode. Another minor change in the camera is that when you are in the video mode, as soon as your finger touches the record button, the camera will start recording the video. On the older version, you actually had to press and let go. So if I keep my finger on the screen, it will not start recording. I have to press and let go to start the recording. This one will start the recording as soon as my finger hits the record button. Also, another minor change to the camera UI is that now the phone shows you the actual zoom level instead of showing you icons of trees. They've also made some changes to the pro video mode. It's really the exact same thing, but with a fresh coat of paint. So what they have done is that they have replaced all of these icons with a description of what each and every one of these feature does. So I think, again, this is much better and easier to use compared to this one. One UI 4 also brings improvements to the built-in photo editor. So what we are going to do is go into our gallery, open up an image and tap on the pencil icon to go into the image editor. And right away, you can see the user interface is slightly different. Now there is a new feature on this new photo editor. If you tap on this button, you will see a new feature which says light balance. Now, as the name suggests, this feature lets you adjust the amount of light in a photograph. So there you go. The photo looks much better now. Now this feature is not the same as brightness. If you just increase the brightness, it really does not help with the details of an image. So this is exactly the same photo on both of these phones. The only difference is that we have used the new light balance feature on the Note 20 Ultra and on the Note 10 Plus we are using the brightness feature and you can clearly see the difference. Light balance really brings out the details in a photo. You can actually see it on the branch and it also does not destroy the colors. So yes, this is such a powerful image editing tool. Love it. So this feature is called protect battery and it is located in the device care settings. So let's go there by dropping down the notification panel, hitting the gear icon, then scrolling down to battery and device care. Then tap on battery, scroll down and finally more battery settings. And here you'll see a new setting called protect battery. What this feature does is that it prevents the battery from charging all the way up to 100%. You see, the thing is, lithium batteries don't like it when they're fully charged or when they're fully discharged. So enabling this feature will at least limit the maximum charge level to 85%, thus extending the overall lifespan of your lithium battery that is inside the phone. So theoretically, as an example, if the phone's battery is going to last about 3 years on average, enabling this feature will increase its lifespan even further, maybe till 5 years. So let me demonstrate how this feature actually works. I've got my phone plugged in and protect battery is turned on right now. And the phone says it will be fully charged in about six minutes. So the charging will stop once the battery level has reached 85%. Let's see what happens. Okay, so there you go. You can see the message charging paused protect battery limits you to 85% and that is exactly what this feature does. It will stop the charging at 85% to increase the overall lifespan of the battery. And once you disable this feature, the charging will resume normally. So now you will see that the battery has started charging once again. But I think it is a good idea to let this feature be turned on unless you want the battery to be 100% charged. For example, if you are going out and you're gonna use the phone a lot and don't have a charger with you, then yeah, go ahead, disable this feature. But if you are staying at home and if you leave your phone plugged in into the charger overnight, then I think leaving this feature on is a very good idea. Now, I believe one of the best changes that this update brings is to the menu that allows you to pick widgets. So what we are gonna do is pinch in and tap on widgets and you will see this menu has been completely redesigned. All of the widgets are now grouped up under the name of the application they belong to. On the previous version, all of the widgets were grouped up alphabetically. So it was kind of cumbersome to search for a specific widget of an application. With this newer version, all of the widgets are grouped up under the name of the application they belong to. 
I've also noticed that on One UI 4, all of the widgets have rounded corners. And here's an example of this. Here's the Amazon Music widget. You can clearly see on One UI 4, they have rounded corners compared to One UI 3. And I think the rounded corners look good. They've also updated the dual clock widget. So now the dual clock actually tells you if it's day or night in the city that you have set. So it is right now nighttime in Nashville, so it is black and it is daytime in New Delhi, so the widget is white. So that's a really nice touch. Lastly, they've also added a new calendar widget. So this one is new, month and today. And this widget shows you the month and the upcoming appointments or the schedule for the day. Oh, and by the way, guys, you can also access this widget through the always on display and the widgets that appear on the lock screen. So some of you guys may know that if you tap on the clock on the lock screen, that will open up widgets that appear on our lock screen. And here is our calendar widget. And like I said, you can also access these through the always on display. So double tap on the clock and swipe down and there you have it. So that is our new calendar widget. One UI 4 also brings a new option to the always on display and it's called show for new notifications. Now this new always on display mode show for new notifications will keep the always on display off until your phone gets a new notification. So to demonstrate, I'm going to send a text message onto this phone and you will see the always on display will come on. So here we go. So there you go, the always on display will be turned on and it will stay on until you dismiss that notification. So yeah, this is an awesome new feature of the always on display. Another new privacy feature of Android 12 is that now you can block all of the applications from accessing the phone's camera and the microphone. To enable this feature, drop down the notification panel, go to settings, scroll down to privacy, and then disable camera access and the microphone access from over here. So this will block every application that is installed on the phone from accessing the phone's camera or the microphone. So as you can see, the camera application is just seeing a black screen. Now I know everyone is screaming at me right now and saying, hey, Uncle Charlie, you can always disable an application's camera and the microphone access from over here. And this will prevent the applications from accessing the camera and the microphone, right? Well, here's the thing. If you disable the camera and the microphone access from over here, some of the applications will outright stop working. So as you can see, I have denied the camera and the microphone permission for Snapchat and it will just refuse to start. But on Android 12, if you disable the camera and the microphone access, you will still be able to use applications like Snapchat. So it's like the camera is there, but it is outputting a black image. And this allows you to use Snapchat normally. You can even take snaps and send them to your friends. So there you go. With this feature, you can use applications that mandatorily requires camera access, such as Snapchat. And the exact same concept also applies to the microphone access. If you have turned off the microphone access from the privacy settings, none of the apps that are installed on your phone will be able to use the microphone. So as an example, let's try and send an audio note on WhatsApp. Let's tap on cancel, try again. So it is recording an audio, but in reality, it's not able to record anything. So let's send this over. And now if we play it back, you guys will not be able to hear anything. That's because the audio recording is blank. So yeah, this is how the new privacy features work on Android 12. By the way, you can add a shortcut in the drop down notification panel, tap on the plus icon and drag and drop the camera access and the microphone access icons over here. To re-enable, just tap on these and now all of the applications will have access to the camera and the microphone normally. So now let's go into the location settings and let me show you a new feature. So drop down the notification panel, tap on the gear icon, scroll down to location, then tap on app permissions. And from over here, you can tap on an application name to allow or deny the location access. Now, a new feature has been added which says use precise location. If you disable this, the app will not be able to access your precise location. Instead, it will only be able to access your approximate location. And this feature is very useful for applications that do not work without the location permission. 
And once again, this is a new feature because the previous version of Android does not have the use precise location toggle. And lastly, inside the phone's settings, if you scroll down and tap on privacy, you will see this new box which says permissions used in the last 24 hours. So this shows you which applications have been using the phone's camera, microphone, location and so on so forth. And you can tap, for example, let's tap on camera and it will show you how many applications and for how long they have been using the phone's camera. So this is another fantastic privacy feature that has been added to Android 12. Guys, if you have multiple Bluetooth devices connected to your phone, you can switch audio between them without unlocking the phone. So check this out. They've added this new button which says media output and if you tap this, the phone will show you a list of all of the Bluetooth devices that are connected to the phone. And from here, you can easily switch the audio output to whichever media device you want. You can also switch the audio onto your phone. By the way, this is also the screen where you turn on Bluetooth dual audio so that feature is already there. So now the same audio is playing back on this speaker as well as the headset. So glad to see dual audio is still there on One UI 4. By the way, this media output button also appears on the always on display. So double tap on the always on display, swipe down, you have the music player widget and you can tap on the media output button right over here. So once again, you can change the output right from the always on display. You don't even need to unlock your phone. So that's awesome. One UI 4 brings multi-window and split-screen view support to applications that do not support this feature. The best example of this is Instagram. So let's launch Instagram and open up Recents. And if I tap on the Instagram icon, you will notice two new options, Open and Split-screen view and Open and Pop-up view. On the previous version, these two options are not available. So as you can see, those two options are missing. And if you tap on open in pop-up view, well, that opens up Instagram in this pop-up view. So that's actually pretty cool. Now you will have to enable this feature. So let me show you how. So drop down the notification panel, tap on the gear icon and go to advanced features. Then tap on labs and enable multi window for all apps. So check this out. This is Instagram and the Chrome web browser running in split screen view. So this is something that was not possible on One UI version 3 and finally it works on One UI 4. So that's awesome. Also, check this out guys, the option to hide the camera cutout is now back. So there you go, we are now in Instagram and as you can see the camera cutout is no longer visible. Let's try another app. So here's gallery, again the camera cutout is not visible. So this option is available in settings, tap on display scroll down to full screen apps and then tap on camera cutout and from over here you will be able to configure this option for individual applications so apart from re-adding the full screen apps they've also made some tweaks to the ui one of them is that they have added this elastic stretch effect so whenever you reach to the end of the menus if you try and scroll further you'll get this stretch effect and this is actually system wide. So if you open up Snapchat and open a chat, you will see similar kind of behavior. So this overstretch UI thing is everywhere. This is my S10 plus still running the older version. And as you can see, this does not have the elastic effect. Now, I personally really enjoy this elastic effect. I think it kind of looks nice, but many people actually dislike it. I got a lot of comments about it on my S21 plus One UI 4 video. So you can actually switch this feature off. So go to settings, then tap on accessibility, tap on visibility enhancements. And right now the effect is on so you can see the elastic effect. But if you enable remove animation, that will disable the elastic effect. But I personally like it. So I'm going to keep this feature turned on. All right. So I guess that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. And if you have enjoyed, make sure to hit the like button. And it goes without saying, do subscribe to the channel and follow me on my social media accounts. I will put all the links in the video's description. And the next phone to get the update is the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Uh, still haven't got the update notification, should arrive anytime now. So yeah guys, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos like these. And I will see you guys in the next video.